Jesus in this world. What does Jesus look like? One who heals, one who loves, one who cleanses, one who is full of mercy, one who is full of beauty, one who is full of grace. What do we look like in this world? Do we look like Jesus? Do we smell like Jesus? Do we sound like Jesus? Do we feel like Jesus? Do we embrace like Jesus? Do you know why I cry out for more? Because I see a world that is in need of more of God. I cry out for more food. Every day of my life, I cry out, Lord, increase the crops. Increase, Lord. Let the food come. Let the, the power of the gospel break forth. Let no child die of starvation. Let cancer be ended in our lifetime. Let it be wiped out. Let AIDS be wiped out. Let AIDS, let cancer be wiped out. Shaka, let the power of God come. Let the anointing of God also come and touch brilliant minds to come up with brilliant solutions that are downloaded from heaven to man, who is created in the image of God to see the glory of God change things on this earth through you. I believe God wants to use you to shine and cause you to love and not be afraid to look into a suffering world, but embrace, believe, hope, worship. The river of God is flowing, and it's flowing with the very presence of his love. The river of God flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. This is the blood of Jesus. This is the, the life of Jesus. This is the beauty of Jesus, the healing blood, the cleansing blood, the blood, the water, the love. This is flowing down the streets. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. Wow. What's that? That's supernatural fruitfulness. Who's up for that? Like supernatural fruitfulness. I believe this is going to happen in the spiritual realm, and you're going to see it in the natural realm. Well, there are going to be crops that are going to grow 12 months of the year. There are going to be things happening we've never dreamed of. And God is going to do these things in our lifetime. We're going to start to see cancer killed, AIDS killed, starvation ended, sex trade industry ended. We are going to see it ended. But it, it's like, Whoa, in the presence comes the beauty of God's love. Okay, I get, I get heavy. I get very heavy, and he says, tell a story. I just don't know what one to tell, so I'm just praying. Help me, Jesus. Wow. Here's one. I like this one. This one's good. We should have a little joy, laughter. This one's funny. Here's a funny story for you, Chuck. I was having a testimony time Sunday morning in my church. Our church is a little different from your church. You've heard this before. It looks different. It is different. It's very much a place of color. Anyway, it's a very different. This is beautiful. So is our church. Our mud huts are lovely, too, full of God. They're full of God, full of presence. So we're having a testimony, and, and it's a place where... 
it, it was an unreached people group, and this lady comes in, and she's testifying, and it's in Makua in Portuguese and then into English because we had visitors there. And so I was one of the translators, and it was like, I didn't know I want to translate that. You remember this story? Were you there? Yeah. <laughs> this lady gets up, and she said, oh, by the way, she'd never been to G12, DTS, cell group. What do you have? Alpha, anything, whatever, huh? Small group. She hadn't been to anything. She hadn't been to any small group. The lady couldn't even read, couldn't even write. She's first generation believer in the history of her family, history of her tribe. There she comes. She's a little lady just coming up. And uh, I said, okay, what's your testimony? What do you want to share? She said, I've always hated my husband, hated, hated, hated my husband, hated him. He's a horrible hate. I hated him. And I was so happy because, you know, he always beat me, and he told me I was a prostitute because I couldn't have kids, and I just hated him. I'm translating going, oh, rats, this is bad. Like, this is not going over well. I want to suck the words back into my throat, but it's too late. Half the people understood what she already said. So I'm like, oh, God, hope it gets better. She said, and then he died, and I was thrilled. <laughs> Absolutely. She said, I was so happy he was dead. But I, she said, I just remembered you guys here in, in church, you know, here you were, and you hugged me, and you said, we should love one another. So I decided to pray for him. Mozambicanos are not stupid. They know when you don't breathe, you have no pulse, you're, di you're freezing, you're stiff. Mozambicanos are not stupid. They know what dead is. That lady lays hands on her dead husband who she hated with all her heart. She lays hands on him and he gets up. This, 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 this is cool. This is very cool. And then she said, so I brought him here so... You could lead him to Jesus. I'm like, ah, I can do this. Okay, I can do that. And so her husband, this is the funny part. Her husband grabs the microphone and he said, I promise to never beat my wife again. He said, I want to know Jesus. He, she prayed for me. I want to know Jesus. That man just knelt down there, and it was just powerfully. He met the Lord, and, and he met love, and God healed that woman's heart. Is that just powerful? Ha, yeah. It's powerful. I, I love this. I love that God does this. You know, I've only prayed one, just I always get upset when people say, oh, you know, they've seen over 400 people raised from the dead, and they think I did it. Like, hello, I was there one time, and there were like 50 people with me, so who knows whose prayer counted? It's the people that raised the dead are the little people, the people with no posters and no videos and no book tables and no, no reputation. It's the little people. They just believe God. Okay. But I want to tell you the next testimony. The next testimony, this lady gets up. Were you there that day? Were you there? Or you just heard this? This is the same day. This was a bizarre thing. This was a weird day. This was a fabulously weird day. The next lady gets up and she said, well, she was Makondi little bit of a rough tribe. Same thing, first generation. You know, they mix syncretism and other face, and it's just, ooh. And she said, oh, you know, I've been weak. I've had bad eyes and bad heart. And so the witch doctors explained, um, told me how I should kill my family and eat them. And yeah, yeah, this is the second testimony, second one. So I, I uh, prepared to kill my family. I'm like, oh, man, Jesus. <laughs> this is my church Sunday morning. <laughs> she said, so I prepared to kill my family. I'm like, and eat them. So I would be strong because if you eat the eyes, you get the eyes. You eat the heart, you get a heart. You eat the lungs, you get a new lung. So she was all prepared. And she said, but I came in here. Listen. That lady said, I came into this church 
And someone hugged me. She said, I decided I'm not going to eat my family. And she walked off. That was it. I said, this is just wild. I said, come back, come back. We want to pray for you. Soak you, soak you. We're going to soak you. Soak, soak. I mean, this is, this is God's love breaking forth. This is God's love breaking forth. Another, oh, another story. I, I want to tell you this story because this, this is going to, it's all a mystery, but this might help a little bit. I don't know. I don't know if it will or not, but I'm going to say, say it anyway. About the blind. I, um, I prayed for the blind, as many of you know the story, and the three ladies with my name saw. That's another story. And then God told me I was blind, and he opened my eyes, and that's why I'm here. <laughs> why, why I go to the Western world and the Eastern world one-third of my life. But when God opens your eyes, you see. And when God touches your heart, you feel. Well, I, I had this thing where I, I love to see blind eyes open, and I love to pray for the blind. And we were walking around the village of joy, and we were praying and pouring out oil, and we were praying. And, and uh, these two, well, no, one, one blind beggar came, and he was, like, following us. And this little girl who had been just, like, tossed at my stairs when she was a baby, one of my own little girls who's now adopted, she's just walking with me, and she's praying, she's about that big. And I'm like, wow, that's powerful. The love of God transformed this little girl who was such an orphan, and she's just just praying and pouring out oil and just laying hands on everything. She's just full of fire. And I'm watching her. And this blind beggar just will not stop. He's like <sighs> pulling on my kapalana and I want some money. I want some money. Did you ever hear that? I want some money. I want some money. I said, just to, you know, we could pray for you. We're in the prayer zone here. Prayer zone, prayer zone. Do you see it? Prayer, we're praying. He did not give a rip. He just wanted to eat. He didn't want prayer. He wanted food. So he's like, no, I want money. I said, like, you're going to have to walk with me then around this whole big place, and then I will pray for you. I don't want prayer. I want money. I said, I know you want money, but I'm going to pray for you and give you money, okay? All right, here we go. God opened his eyes. I stuck a his eyes right up into the sun. Do you see? Do you see? He's like, no. Can you give me some money? I said, don't you see that light? A little dim something somewhere or something at all. He's like, no, I'm blind. <laughs> oh, fabulous. Okay, here's your money. Come back Sunday so you can see. I don't know why I said it. I don't know why I said it. I have no idea why I said it. I must have somehow just lost my mind and gained his. And I said, come back Sunday and you'll see. So the guy comes back and he brought a friend. Because, you know, they found it because of the money. Absolutely. He had no, what, no thought that he would see. He already had his face stuck into the sunlight with nothing and so he's not at all thinking, you know, maybe I'm going to see in my friend too. He's thinking maybe the two of us are going to eat, which of course they are because we feed everybody that comes there every day. Yeah, of course, that's just normal. But anyway, we prayed. We prayed for the two of them. And his eyes open up, just open up. And he's screaming, I can see, I can see, I can see. I said, Awesome. Do you want to go get baptized? We just had a little parade. We go walking across the street into the ocean. He's screaming. I can see. I can see. That was really nice. That was just, that was the river. Now, now why, why didn't he see the first day? Why did he see the next day? What was that about? Do you understand that? I don't. That's a mystery. I don't get it. Another time, we're in a village. We're being stoned, and 
The foreigners are locked in the truck because they want to intercede. So my, myself and my little girls are outside. So they're throwing rocks. And one of my little girls who I picked up, you know, she had, I don't know how many STDs. I think she had like five STDs. By the time she was 10, this girl had some anger, but God came in and healed her heart as we just embraced her as our own. So she's up there, and she just jumps up on the truck, and she's not afraid of the rocks at all. Not at all. She's like ducking them. Well, <laughs> shakaraba. The rocks were flowing. Not flowing. Rocks don't flow. I know that. The rocks were being thrust at us. I was hit very hard on my lower back. I was in a lot of pain. My little girl's there. And... <sighs> First thing, she started screaming, bring me the deaf. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> bring me the deaf. <laughs> whoa. So as they continue throwing rocks and sand and screaming, they bring a deaf person. She fearlessly puts her fingers in her on her tongue, she's watched mom all this time, and we've prayed again. She sticks them in their ears, and the person's healed. Totally, completely. And she's like, yeah. And then they just drop their rocks right there. Just drop their rocks. That was the end of dropping rocks. Last month, I dedicated the church in that village. Last month. Whoa. They was like, what can we do? The same night, this is so cool, the same night, those guys, after the deaf person heard, they're like, okay, we have more, we have more. Where, what? We have more people, more people. So they say, come pray for the blind man. And so um, I went with my little girls. I think the foreigners got out of the truck when the rocks stopped flying. And so I, I, am, I think I brought one with me, and we, we, we were like, trundling down a kilometer away in the dark and um, found this man. This is a funny story. He was wearing a Smurf sheet. <laughs> what, what's he doing wearing a Smurf sheet in the middle of northern Mozambique? Where'd he get a Smurf sheet? I don't know. Came in a container, I suppose. He did. Thank God he didn't know what he was wearing. I thought that. I really thought that. I thought, thank God you have no idea how silly you look because this is ridiculous. I mean, this man's like an older, dignified man there in a Smurf sheet. That's all. So I pray for him, and I just continuing. I stick my flashlight right in his eyes. He's like, no, I don't see. I'm blind. I said, well, do you see that now? Nothing. I'm blind, he said. I told you I'm blind, but I have a headache. So, man, now that headaches get healed in America. So, I'm like, really, I was thinking that. Well, a headache, yes, I'll pray for your headache. So, I prayed, and he's like, yeah, my head feels better. That's awesome. The whole family wanted to know Jesus because they felt loved. It's our jobs to love, his jobs to heal, our jobs to love, his jobs to heal, our jobs to love, his jobs to heal. So I just loved him. I hugged him. I just loved on him, his jobs to heal, our jobs to love. Let the love of God be the power of God that heals. And I'm just holding him. I said, all right, send a runner when you see. So the next day, day or two later, I can't remember, I'm sitting in the car of the most wealthy man in Mozambique, in, in not Mozambique, no, those are Southerners, in northern Mozambique. I'm sitting in his car, and he's got these wild windows, you know, you just push a button, it goes zzz, and up and down. And he was talking to me about, we wanted to do some famine relief in India, and he, he was talking to me, probably wanted to sell some things, which is awesome. We need to buy things. And so we were talking, and suddenly, out of nowhere, comes this panting little man. And he's just banging on those amazing windows. Bam, 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 bam. And, and I'm just kind of looking at him, and he's bam, 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 right next to my face. And, and this man, I, I just looked, and 
I, I just pushed the button and the window went down just by itself like that. Down it went. And the man said, you said to send a runner. You said to send a runner. He said, I'm the runner. I'm the runner. He said, the man you prayed for is healed. He was also paralyzed, by the way, from his waist down. He said, he's in his farm. He wanted to do his farming, so he sent me, and I ran here. It was about at least 10 kilometers. The guy ran there, and he said, I'm here. The man's healed. The man's healed. And that man of another faith grabbed my hands and stuck them on his eyes and said, pray for me, pray for me. And he started sobbing. That's the mystery. That's the mystery. Why did God wait? Why did God let us leave there that night with the man in his smurf sheet sitting there paralyzed and blind and then let him be healed a day or two later? I don't know. Do you? Do you understand that? Except that this other man would have never heard of such a thing or asked for prayer without the timing being absolutely perfect. God's timing is absolutely perfect and God's love is absolutely undeniable. And whether you understand or you don't understand, your job is to love. Here's the, the rest of it. Short, the short final point. Then... 12 months of the year fruitfulness and the no, the nations they're for the healing of the nations the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations god wants to heal the nations as the river of his love flows from the throne and of the lamb do you remember the prostitute woman in the book of John? Do you remember that woman who Jesus gave dignity to and sat with? She had the four husbands, and then she's living with someone, and no one wanted to, to, to work with her or draw water with her. Do you remember that story? And do you remember Jesus said, I will be in you a well of living water? Do you remember I will be a well. I will well up within you. I will spring out from within you. And I will be a well, and the worship will come from you. And then it speaks in Revelation, Shaba Rebe, 22 of the river that flows from the Lamb. And Jesus said, you are called. You are called to carry the river of my love inside of you. I want to be inside of you a well, a river, a beauty, a life, a life force, a healing force, an incredible love force that never stops. Oh, could I, t could I tell one more story? I promise it's my last story. When another government took away all our buildings and beat up our kids, it was rather painful. And um, there were people, you know, they didn't believe that anyone should ever pray or worship or read any kind of religious books at all, if you understand what kind of government that might be. And they came and they beat our children and they, they took away our 55 buildings and we were all homeless. And this was a really tragic thing and, and some of you heard about it. But then, last month, 15 years later, the same people, the government rehabilitated that entire children's center, called Iris and said, we want your people to come and train every, every worker in this place because your um, children's villages are the most amazing children's villages in the whole nation. They gave us back. 15 years later. Jesus! I love it. Same people. I, I cried. You know, do you know what else? We blessed them. 
We'd never cursed them. We blessed them. We blessed them. They persecuted us. They stoned our kids. They beat. We prayed. We taught the kids. We didn't go to the press. We didn't go to the press. The embassy wanted us to go to the press and make noise. We said, no. We want to love and we want to stay in this nation. We don't want to be a stench. We want to be the beauty, the fragrance. One day, God's fragrance will be known. One day. Can you imagine 15 years later? <laughs> train all of our people. They want us to train social welfare. I mean, hello. Yippee for God. Hooray for God. That, <laughs> yay. Yay. I love it. I love it. Yay, God. Yay, God. Yay, God. You're worthy. Love wins. Love cons conquers. Love never fails. Love never fails. Love never fails. Love never fails fails. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm getting happy. I just preached myself happy. Okay. Here's the last words. No more stories. They. Listen to what happened here. There will no longer be any curse. That's the river we're contending for. That's the river, the river that kills cancer. That's the one we're contending for. Right here, right now. Right here, right now, we're contending for that one. The one that kills AIDS. The ones that kills cancer. And we will keep contending and pressing and pushing and asking God to fill us with his presence in his river until every case... Until your son sees the beauty of what we contend for. I, 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 I just, I won't stop. So, no longer a curse. No longer the curse of dementia, Alzheimer, cancer, AIDS, dysentery. No more curse. That's the kingdom we're praying for. That's the kingdom we're contending for. The throne of God and the Lamb will be in the city. And those servants will serve him. And they will see his face. They will see his face like Moses, face to face, cheek to cheek. They will see his face. And there will no more, there will no longer be night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light. And they will reign forever and ever. And the angel of the Lord said, these words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, sent his angel to show his servants the things that must soon take place. <laughs>